Hi everyone, this screencast is going to cover the process of creating an answer key only assessment on eDoctrina. Uh, this option is the one you want to use if you are a teacher who has a pre-existing midterm exam um, as a PDF that you're going to print out uh, and give to your students in hard copy, but you want them to fill in the answers on a bubble sheet. Um, so we're going to do this process from start to finish. We've had a couple trainings on it, so if you weren't available to make those trainings, this video is definitely what uh, you want to refer to if that is the situation you're in. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to make sure that we're logged into eDoctrina successfully. If you're still having issues logging into eDoctrina, uh, please reach out to either Matt or myself and we can help you with that process. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get started right with assessments. Okay, so you can either go to assessment up here on the uh, top kind of navigation bar or you can click assessments under the plan section. Now what you're going to do is you are going to click the insert button if you want to create a new one. It has a plus and then it says insert. It's the big, well, it's not that big, but it is a bright yellow button that you can click. Once you do that, you're going to uh, fill in the information about your midterm or whatever assessment. This isn't just for midterms. You can use this at any point throughout the year. Um, so I'm going to make a mock final, we'll call it. So we're going to call it mock. Spanish final exam, okay? Um, I'm going to have an answer key ready, kind of off to the side. And what I wanna do is at this point, I am going to create all of the uh, data points for my exam. So for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna say that this will be given on Monday, okay, January 23rd, and it covers Spanish three, which is grade 10, and my subject is low. Okay, so please make sure that your uh, filters or data points are edited accordingly. Now, what you want to do at this point is select the answer key only option. Okay, so it says select this if you already have a test made. Okay, so if you already have a copy, a hard copy, or a digital copy that you're going to print out for your kids, and you just want to enter the answer key so that you can print answer sheets that they will then fill in. All right, so we're going to select that option. And then it's going to ask you general questions about your assessment questions. So how many questions would you like to add? So I'm going to say that on my Spanish final exam, there, is, there are 65 questions. They're all multiple choice. Okay. Um, it, happen, it just so happens that on mine, there are letters. If you uh, give multiple choice tests with numbers, then you would select numeric. Okay. You can also change the type um, to true or false, fill in the blank, or teacher scored. And even if all 65 of these questions aren't all uh, multiple choice with a letter, you can go in after the fact and change them uh, one by one. So what the kind of best practice for this is to do is just select the type um, of question that applies to the most, uh, the highest amount of questions. So for example, if I have 60 multiple choice and I have 65 teacher scored, it would make the most sense to say, okay, I have 65 in total. And then what I'm going to do is say their letter after the fact, when I'm done, I can go through and take those last five and change them to teacher scored manually. Okay. Um, so what you want to do from now, from here on is uh, select the amount of choices that you want. So four would be A, B, C, D, five would be A, B, C, D, E, and so on and so forth. The correct answer, um, this is kind of in keeping with the idea of speaking on behalf of most of the questions. So if you do want to take a look at your answer key and see, you know, just eyeball it and see what the most correct answers are, um, say the majority of them are C's, what you would do is click C. This will set the correct answer to C for all of them, but it actually eliminates some work because you can um, just go through one by one and change only the ones that are not C um, in this example. What you want to do here as well is change the point value to whatever is the most um, common point value. So let's say most of mine are worth two points. Okay. Now, again, all of these um, fields and per question things are editable on a manual basis, and you can go in and change them as you see fit. So we're going to click Create Assessment, and this is going to take some time. <clears throat> so it will build the assessment. It's literally creating... Um, each question one by one so that you can go in and edit it. Once that process is done, it'll say initializing. 
And when we get to the end of this initializing process, it should uh, give us a screen that has a little tile or a little square for each question, okay? And this is where you can edit the uh, correct answer, the type of the question, so on and so forth, but we'll get to that in a minute. So what you wanna do is make sure that all of the information that you entered kind of at the beginning of this process is still here, okay? And then uh, an, an important component of this is to find the course that you're teaching and uh, link it to your assessment. Now, this is not a required uh, process. It's not a required step, but it will save you some time when you're looking for your uh, assessment in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search this field. Now, this is linked completely with SIS. So however your course is listed when you log in to take attendance is how it's going to be here. Okay, so I'm going to take Spanish 2. And I've got a couple options in, in terms of how I can add it. I can double click, or let's say I wanna add Spanish three just for fun, I can click and drag, okay? So I'm just gonna keep this to Spanish two though. All right, so that's how, whoops. So I'm gonna delete this again, and I'm gonna double click Spanish two, okay? And that is actually, I'm glad that happened because it's important to make sure that you do in fact have the right class in there, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna kind of move on to the questions part. So this questions part will actually lay out everything um, in terms of the multiple choice questions that you've created. Now this defaulted to the correct answer being C. Let's say that not all of them are C obviously, so I'm going to change the ones that aren't. This is going to require me looking at my answer key, making some per question changes. Okay, so I'm going to pick and choose the ones that are not C and change them accordingly. Okay, and you can do that throughout the entire test. Another thing that you might want to do is change the question type. So if I have, for example, 60 multiple choice questions, that's all fine and great, but these last uh, five are not. We're going to say that they're teacher scored questions. So I'm going to go in and make the uh, changes accordingly. And we should be good. All right, so now let's pretend that everything looks great and we're ready to go. Okay. Now, what you want to do is make sure that um, you've saved, okay? So it's always good to save early, save often. And just do a quick double check. Everything looks good here. Um, you can now edit some more advanced settings. So like if you want the results to be uh, available online, you can do that. The students can reopen the test. All these different settings that you can kind of peruse and look through at your on your own time and see if there's any kind of technical things that you want to happen with this test. Um, you can also set a time limit. What's really cool about this is you can upload a PDF so that the kids can have a digital copy of their exam if you'd rather not print out a bunch of PDFs um, and they can just choose the correct answer for each question. So all of these settings are available as kind of customizations, okay? Now what we wanna do, always kind of a good practice is to click the preview online button and this should, at this point, look like this. There should be 65 options, okay? And since we're going to print out a bubble sheet, it's not, eDoctrine is not going to take the time to list all of the questions out, A, B, C, D, et cetera. So that's actually how this should look at this point, okay? Um, so what we're going to do now is we are going to, sorry, Kim, we are going to uh, make sure that this is saved, and then you can click Save and Close, okay? And now here's what we need to do. Okay, and this is something that is a little bit tricky because um, there are multiple ways to do this. So what you want to do is go to your teacher dashboard, and here's where we're going to find our assessment so we can tell eDoctrina um, which actual assessment that we want to print out. So the easiest way to start is to just reset all the filters so you can clear out anything that you might have been playing around with in the past. Okay. Um, the only things that you need to change are the ones with the red stars, which means that they're required. So since you uploaded the course information into your assessment, you can select your course. So I'm gonna say, okay, that was a Spanish 2 one. So I'm gonna click Spanish 2. Now, that's the course, I need to move on to the class. So which sections of Spanish do I want to assign this to? So I'm gonna say section one and section two. Okay, now it will automatically take all those students that belong in those two sections and select all students for you. 
Um, so it's a good idea to just make sure that this number on the bottom of records matches your number of total students in the section, I'm sorry, in the course. Um, and you can do a quick run through of the list just to make sure that everything's good, okay? Now what you wanna do at this point is you can leave this Candor Central School test bank as it is, and then you wanna select the assessment, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in Spanish. Now I've got all these different things, okay? And the one that I just created was called Mock Spanish Final Exam. If you are in the um, editing process, it will give you, um, if you rewind in this video, you can see that while we were editing, it gave a number in parentheses. It's always a good idea to write that number down just because if you don't remember exactly what you called your exam, um, you might have to do some searching. So if you instead just type in 313791, it will narrow it right down to this one and you just click it, okay? Once the exam name or the assessment name is in this part right here, you're all good to go. Okay, so you can click on any area outside just to leave that dialog box. And what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go to print. So once you click print, it will give you all of the options for bubble sheets, okay? So I'm going to select the big bubbles just because I like that. All of my uh, multiple choice questions are numeric, right? Or I'm, excuse me, they're uh, letters. So I'm gonna click all letter. <clears throat> and what you're gonna do there is you're gonna do lowercase or capital, which is fine. I like capital letters, so I'm just gonna do that. Then you're gonna make sure that all of your students are selected here, okay? So it should be 40 students that are selected. Once that looks good, you're gonna go ahead and click print answer sheets. This will do some work, it's gonna do some compiling, and you should get a uh, stack of answer sheets that looks like this, okay? So there's gonna, this is gonna be a multi-page one because there's 65 questions. Um, also, if you notice, these last uh, five are scored out of two points, okay? Those are the short, or I'm sorry, the teacher scored questions. So what you would do as the teacher, if you selected this option for some of yours, is you would bubble in the score that corresponds. So if they got two out of two points, you would bubble in two, all right? And if they got, you know, they totally missed the next one, you'd bubble in zero and so on. All right, it's also you know a good idea to just kind of make sure that you have all of your answer sheets here, okay, um, and that you are doing this um, so that there are 80, because you have 40 students all together, so it would make sense if there's two pages per student that there's 80, okay? From here, I definitely recommend downloading the file to your computer. Um, if you click download, you can go right to desktop, and you can save it as mock Spanish, in this case, final, right? Um, it will save it as a PDF, so you can go ahead and click save. And then from there, after your file downloads, you can refer to it in your Explorer, or if you're using a Mac, it's Finder, and then you're just gonna go to desktop, where it was, and mock Spanish final, okay? From there, you have a PDF that you can open in Adobe or uh, whatever program you use. You can make any edits as necessary, and you can print them out. If you don't want to go that far and download it to your computer, that's no problem. Um, you can definitely print it right from Chrome. However, um, if you ever want to get back to these answer sheets, you want to change something, you're going to have to go through uh, the filtering process on your teacher dashboard to access all of these. You're going to have to select these options all again. Um, so that's why I definitely recommend just downloading it right to your computer if everything looks good. That way you can access the file and quickly make copies or however you want to do it. Um, so this was a little bit of a detailed process. So if you have any questions, please feel free to come see me uh, or Matt or just write us an email and we can set up a time to work together. We had some trainings on it um, in the past. We're going to have a training on actually scanning the answer sheets. Um, I'm also going to develop a document that lists out the steps for that, so please uh, stay, in, stay tuned in your email because um, those resources will be coming out very shortly. Thank you for watching this. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to stop by.